Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to use and get the most out of your lower thirds in Final Cut Pro X. So let's go over what a lower third actually is so that we can use them more effectively. Basically, a lower third is a text-based graphical overlay that goes over top of your footage, usually providing information about what's being displayed. Probably the most iconic example is to display somebody's name and position where they're the main subject of focus in the video, usually the main text being larger and the subtext being smaller in size. It's actually called a lower third because its positioning is in the lower third of the frame. While lower thirds have a traditional look that tends to be used over and over and over again, you can really technically turn any text into a lower third by repositioning it and giving it a purpose to convey certain information. Why is this helpful? Well, if you didn't know that, you might just be tempted to look at what Final Cut Pro X templates are available to you and just use the ones that say lower third, which limits what you can actually do with this concept. Here in Final Cut, you can find lower thirds by going up to your titles generator sidebar, and underneath titles, there's an entire section just for lower thirds. From really basic with no animation, all the way up to some pretty flashy examples. If we were just to take the basic lower third here and drag it onto our timeline, we can click the text that we want to change and type in the information that we want to convey. But if you're like me, you're probably at least a little bit disappointed with the selection that comes with Final Cut Pro. It used to be kind of a little bit nice and flashy, but it seems like most of these have actually just run their course and they look a little bit cheap now. So let's first take a look at how you can really easily spice up a basic bland lower third, then how to use templates and how to get the most out of them, and then some tips to really take your lower thirds to the next level. So let's start by adding a background to this text. Let's go to generators and add a custom generator. Place it under our text, but over our footage. The reason we want to use a custom generator is because now we can change it to whatever color we want. And I'm going to start by actually making my text black and then making my background itself white. But you can choose whatever color combination you'd like. Now with our custom generator selected, let's go to the video inspector and go down to crop. Take each of these parameters and move them so that they start to frame the text in a pleasant way. And a nice little tip here is that you can do this separately for each of the two different text sections. I'm going to hold alt and click and drag the custom generator up and I'll leave the original and create a duplicate. So now let's do the same thing for the bottom portion of text. Awesome. Now we could leave this as is, but there's another thing we can do to help take this to the next level. Let's highlight all of these layers and create a compound clip by either right clicking and selecting compound clip or hit option G. Name your compound clip whatever you'd like, but I'm going to name mine what our text actually says and then call it lower third after, just to keep things clear and organized. So what's the benefit of doing this? Well, the nice thing now is that if we wanted to change things like the length as it appears on screen or add effects like a fade in or fade out or even change the positioning, everything acts as a single unit, making it much easier to control. And if you really needed to make any changes to those elements individually, you can just double click on the compound clip and you'll be able to adjust it to your liking. But now that we've got that down, let's take this up a notch. Instead of having our lower third and adding two generators for those two sections, let's do the same thing but also with two different pieces of basic text. And if you wanted to make sure that it's in a good position, now that you're placing it manually, go up to View, Show in Viewer, Title and Action Safe Zones. These little lines will pop up and a great place to put your text is nestled in this corner right here. Try to always stay within this box when working with text, but right in the corner is a great way to give your text a good look based on positioning. Okay, so now our heading and subheading have different text layers on our timeline. What's the benefit of this? Well, we can add those generators as our backgrounds to our text, stacking them in an offset pattern like this on our timeline, and then we can make two separate compound clips, one for each of these different pieces. Now let's highlight one and turn it off with V. Take your text and keyframe it in its current position and then move backwards and move it off screen to activate a second keyframe. Great. Now activate the transform properties here in your inspector and hold control and click each of these keyframes and set them to smooth, giving it a nice smooth ease in. Our animation looks great, but now we wanna do the same thing for the other piece of text. No problem, hit Ctrl V to show your keyframes in this larger area. Click and hold Shift and click on each of the keyframes in question, then go up to Edit, Keyframe, Copy. Now activate your second text layer again by hitting V,
and then highlight and hit Option Shift V. This will paste those keyframes you copied over onto the new text layer. But now comes the whole reason why we separated these out to begin with. Let's move one of these layers forward a few frames, and what you get is the same motion but in a pleasing offset pattern. Awesome, right? So I hope you can see that there's a lot of different ways to get some great looking lower thirds, even with the sparse selection within Final Cut. But what's great is that you can also download and use templates created by other people. I'm going to be using this one here for Motion Array. But keep in mind what we mentioned before. You can really use any text template and just move it to the lower third section of your frame to quickly turn it into a lower third. But once you have this template, to quickly install it, go to your Movies, Motion Templates, and place it into your Titles folder. And I have an entire folder just for Motion Array Templates specifically. Now that it's in your library, you can easily use it by just dragging and dropping it into your timeline. Double click on the text to change it, and you can even adjust things like the color of text and objects within the template. Now every so often you'll notice that a template has an animation in and out, but every so often it only has the animation in. If you want to give yours an outgoing animation as well, here's what you can do. Make this a compound clip. Duplicate this lower third by holding Option and clicking and dragging. Then hit Command R to bring up the speed properties on this duplicated second clip. And choose Custom. Then reverse the speed here. Now adjust the timing so that it stays on for as long as you'd like it to, keeping in mind that the far left portion of this clip and the far right portion of this clip are going to be the sections that you want to keep. And boom, there you go. Animate in, animate out. Now there's one last thing that I really like to do that can help set apart your lower thirds and really your text in general. I like to take a sharpie and actually write out my text by hand to give it that sort of imperfect look. And I actually do that by literally taking a sharpie and actually writing it out on a white piece of paper, whatever it is that you want to say. Then without casting shadows over top, take a picture and import that picture into Final Cut Pro. Crop the edges and make sure that your white paper background is as bright and pure white as possible. Next comes the great part. Search for the effect Luma Keyer and apply it to the image. Invert the Luma and set the roll off to as high as you'd like until you get the desired look. Now place it over top of your background and you've got a custom handwritten lower third. But there's actually a way to incorporate this into your downloaded lower thirds templates as well. But sadly, it's only available for those with Apple Motion, but here's what you do. Right click on the template in question that you want to incorporate it into and select Open in Motion, and place your image. Do the same thing as before to get the text isolated, crop, add a luma key, invert. Now find the piece of text that you want to replace, disable it, and place your image in the same area. Now we can see that before, the positioning of the text box would actually dictate if we saw the text or not. This is called an image mask, and we can see that the original text had one beneath it. Just copy this by highlighting it and hitting Command C. Then highlight your handwritten image text and hit Command V. And boom, now your text respects the boundaries of this text box. Just hit save now and choose the copy option. And now this is actually gonna be what shows up by default when we drag and drop this lower third template into your project. The text has been replaced with your own handwriting. Awesome, right? How cool is that? And guys, that's just been a quick tutorial on how you can create lower thirds and how to use lower thirds templates. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. And if you did, as always, we have tons of templates here at motionarray.com for you to use to save time and energy in your video projects. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.